Good evening. Welcome to the October 12th, 2016 Zoning Board of Appeals. We have a roll call, please. Ms. Choup? Here. Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Murren? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Okay. So I stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> do I have a motion on the September 14, 2016 uh, minutes? Move approval. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? They seem really thorough. They did a good job on them. They're pretty thorough. Uh, no discussion. All in favor? That's unanimous. Well, I uh, and abstain. Okay. And then we'll go to... Uh, Appeal number 2585, it's a variance appeal by Charles and Elisa Lee, 47 Winslow Homer Road, this is map U19, parcel 42. All right. No, I'm really no, 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 that's last week. Everyone. Sorry about that. Appeal number 2589, <laughs> just coming from one meeting to another, trust me. We're all the way up to 25. 2589 is a limited reduction of yard size by Charles Reed and Patricia Nelson Reed, 34 Pillsbury Drive. Assessor's map U21, parcel 72. At one point before I retire, I will get an entire meeting without a mistake. So do we have uh, somebody here from, uh, if you could do me a favor, take the microphone, uh, state your name, address, and what you'd like to accomplish. We'll go from there. <coughs> Hi there. I'm Patricia Nelson Reed. Um, one of the co-owners with my husband Charlie Reed. I'm Gary Hebert, the contractor. Okay, thank you. And why don't you walk through what you'd like to do, and we'll we'll go from there. Okay. Sure. We are adding um, an addition to the home. Um, we're going to be moving here. We live in North Yarmouth now, but we're um, going to be moving here permanently um, after we sell our house in Nor North Yarmouth next spring. Um, so uh, most of the addition isn't relevant to this. Um, to this request, but in the front of the house, we currently have a farmer's porch that goes across. Um, our house is built within the 30-foot set, set yard, you know, yard setback, I guess it's called. Mm -hmm. So um, there is currently the form, farmer's por porch that was approved years ago, and what we plan to do is take down half the farmer's parts, porch and add a second-floor deck. Um, so, because it'll be a door off of our kitchen into the, onto the deck, so we have um, some views of the water and uh, of the area off, right off the kitchen. And the other thing in the uh, in the front and the doorway, there'll be maybe 18 inches moved in front, adding um, a little bit of more room when you open the door because it almost hits the uh, stairs right now. Yeah. And basically, our permission is for I think it's 9.2, um, less than 9.3 feet. Um, to be added to that, that front area, and most of that area is already filled with a farmer's porch. It'll just be added um, a, a second floor deck rather than the, the first floor front porch in that area. Okay. Thank you. Um, did you want to add anything to what you said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a variance field. Okay. The limit reduction yard size, and so um, let's jump right into the limit reduction yard size section. V five six. V five six. Thank you. Page five. V five. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So what we'll do is when we go through right the criteria, and uh, and help you out if you need to. Okay. I don't see that minute here. I don't remember the the written version. Um, written yep. version? Yeah. 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 Here's your application. <laughs> so 
So the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size a residential is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant lot, a non-conforming of record. And so you'd just like to state uh, into the record, right in the microphone, what, what the answer is. You can read it if you want. Uh, and it, that way it's on the record. Um, the the uh, home was built in 1967. Okay. Uh, the, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. More than half of the properties on our side of the street have either second floor or third floor or both decks. So this is very consistent with what everybody is doing on our, on our side of the street in Pillsbury. Okay. And uh, due to the physical features of the lot or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with currently applicable yard size requirements. And our home is situated on the uh, within the 30-foot uh, setback already, and we cannot otherwise have a deck near the kitchen or in front of the in front of the uh, house. Almost all of the existing deck above the garage is going to be removed and made into a master bedroom and um, to create all of our living space on one floor because our goal is to age there. And hopefully we won't need, um, we'll be able to live there forever until whenever the time is for us to go someplace else. So this is important because we hope to enjoy our new home for many years. We're trying to get all of our, our, our living space on that second floor. And the impacts or effects of the enlargements, expansions of the new building and structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building and structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. In our view, there'll be no difference at all to our neighbors. Uh, the new deck is very similar in size and location to the existing farmer's porch and to existing decks that are throughout our neighborhood. And you haven't started any construction on it yet? That's correct. We're and do you currently own the property? Do you own the property now or is it on a contract? Or? We own the property. My house. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. I was, but I just wanted to make sure because of the time. Mm -hmm. time about, um, okay. Uh, do you have any letters or phone calls on this? We did not. Uh, <coughs> one step in the data here? Um, no. Um, they have done the proper calculations. Um, the, the part that's in the uh, within the the um, limited reduction of yard size setback um, is certainly not going to pop the, the um, total building coverage over the limit. Other parts of the proposed project would be the, the rear deck and, and some other areas. And it all when the project's all aggregated, it's still under the 20% maximum building coverage. So it's fine. So uh, we see a lot of activity in these pictures here, like in the plot plan with the red. But are we really only dealing with one issue of setback? You're really only dealing with the front setback. Yeah. So everything else falls in the box. Yeah. Yep. And so all the other activity is fine. Correct. Well, yeah, there's yeah, the front setback and uh, <coughs> yeah, it's just this front, it's just everything that occurs in that front setback. Okay. Um, and if I can ask one more sure. clarification, is this going, is it extending out beyond or is it just going lateral? Are they going out beyond the building's current structure footprint? A little bit, a little bit because their deck is on the the way the building is positioned at an angle, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you're right. <laughs> but the way the building is positioned at an angle, as they go to that far right-hand side, they have the ability to have a little more depth on that deck than they would have on the narrower end of the, the farmer's porch. But it's within the... But it's still within the 10-foot allowable reduction in the front yard setback. Based on the new regulations? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so based on the new regulations, that's allowed. I'm not sure what you mean by new regulations. Yeah, no but one from the, uh, the, the, the Higgins Beach. This isn't in Higgins the Beach. This is in Pine Point. Okay, this is, I'm, I guess I'm confused on when you say that they're allowed, or do we have, to, we have to grant it? This is a limited reduction of yard size. So, so in this type of variance, the board can approve a reduction in the required yard <coughs> size of 10 feet on the front, and five feet on the sides and the rear. Okay, so I, I, I was for some reason thinking I don't, I, when you said allowed, I was thinking automatically allowed. No, they're oh. not automatically allowed anything but a, you know, they have to meet a 40 foot setback. They were given a limited reduction of yard size variance several years ago to do the farmer's porch. And now they're, what they're coming back for is another one 
they're going to actually take a bit of that farmer's porch away in order to put the second story deck. But it too needs that relief uh, up to 10 feet, and they're asking for 9.23. Okay, and, and it's the previous owner. We want the property. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't mean I didn't mean you personally, but this property received. I should have said this property received <laughs> a limited reduction of yard size variance, and it's it's okay. There's no limit on the number you can ask for. So <laughs> after four, we. Uh, <laughs> does anybody wish to speak to this from the uh, <coughs> audience? I'm going to open the public hearing to it. Anybody wish to speak? I'll close the public hearing part. Again, we've got no letters or phone calls, nope. emails. No. Nope. Um, open the board. Comments, questions, thoughts? So if you said overall it's still under? Yeah, it's under the 10 foot. So we're not. I'm not. Can you be more specific? Yeah, could you speak in your mic? Speak in your mic. Overall, I thought, I thought I heard you say that it's <coughs> under the overall area that they have now. Or did I, was I mistaken? Right here, coverage, I was talking coverage. about building coverage. On okay. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 within the twenty percent building coverage allowed. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Is, in the picture we've got here, the front elevation is, is this what your home currently looks like, or is the always look? There's not a lot changing to the front other than the deck to the side, uh, to the front right side. So if. Yeah, the front doesn't really change a whole lot. So around the, where it says second floor <coughs> here on the right hand side, that deck there is new. Which uh, page are you looking? Are you uh, that front, right front page? Front page, yeah. Um. <laughs> the deck above the garage you talked about? Uh, the no, the uh, well, we can talk about both. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's the new deck we're, talk we're talking about. The one over the garage? No, no, the one on the right. The one on the right. Plan view right. Okay. Over the garage right now is just a garage. I mean, there's it's just it's a huge deck, but that's going to be that little um, the three windows there. That's the um, added that master bedroom that's going to be put on that deck. Okay, which is in the in the area appropriate. It doesn't, that's not. There's, part it's of not even part of this because it's all within the regular building. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're really looking at, just to confirm, is we're talking about this little piece here. <coughs> that's right. <coughs> on the right hand corner of the wall, we give you right so, there. Yeah, this yeah. is what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. Because right now the farmer's deck goes all the way across there. So we're going to take the farmer's deck out to where the door is and just put the upstairs deck on it. And, and what's below that? Is that set back in? Mm -hmm. Back to the house. That's set in and with, uh, is it sticking out five feet or I don't know, having trouble trouble with the visual visual on it. Okay. If you look at this you on, on the on if I'm looking at the. Um, the elevations. If you look at the view that I've got on the screen right now, yep. if I can get my handy dandy pointer to work, I don't see it. Battery's failing. <laughs> oh no. Go back to the oldest one out of your um. hearing aids. <laughs> okay, right here. Look quick before the battery dies. <laughs> right, right here. You can see that that's open oh, okay. underneath it. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to the board for questions, comments. Uh, to me, it's pretty straightforward. Um, <coughs> I don't see anything unreasonable about it. It's minimal, or de minimis, certainly de minimis on it. Uh, everything else is in line. Uh, I think we should just go through the items again separately. And uh, unless any board members have got some real angst about it. I'm going to do is I'll start down. Leroy, I'll start down at your end if it's okay. Mr. Crockett, Mr. Crockett, if it's okay, I'll start down at your end and we'll just roll right down. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, so the existing building structure uh, this is straightforward. The building ex existed prior to 1991. I think we can all skip that. That's a statement of fact. And the request of reduction of is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Okay. I would say yes. It's very similar to what they have. I mean, they're not, they're trying to keep within the envelope. And 
I don't see any problems with it. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Plus, uh, it, to me, the, the fact that they already have a farmer's porch that goes all the way across there, they're just replacing it with something different. Um, so, uh, as Mr. Crockett said, it's within, it's within the envelope and uh, also what Mr. Stark said that it's going to be just a little bit smaller than what was there before, so I don't see an issue with this. It, it looks uh, it looks fine with me. Um, the what they're taking off, they're just raising up on a couple four by fours, pretty much. No problem. I think it's a nice addition. I mean, I think it's consistent with the neighborhood and the new and new houses and the houses that are being improved in it. I would uh, agree with the sentiments of everybody else, but I just add to it the um, the issue regarding. Um, using it to enjoying the property in the same essential manner. You'd mentioned something about view and um, your neighbors all get that same view and I'm assuming as with when most people buy property they're trying to, to capitalize on either a, 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 some some view be it some people like a highway or whatever. Um, your view is important to you and that's what you're tying that to. Is that fair? That's correct. And so I would say two is math. Uh, so all in favor of two being met, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and of the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Well, it, it pretty much is <coughs> now. Like we said before, I mean, it's just going from down below to up above. Well, it's, it it uh, well, it isn't within the exact uh, envelope for building. It is uh, within the within the statutes for us to be uh, the allowable statutes, uh, less than 10 feet uh, encroachment, and uh, I, I just don't think it's unreasonable at all. I would agree with Mr. Stark's statement. I would agree also. I agree with the board. I mean, the farmer's porch is already there, and you're. That is pretty straightforward. I'm, I have no problem with number three. So all in favor of number three? Unanimous. The impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, and building a structure on existing uses of the neighborhood will not substantially di different or greater than the impacts and effects of the building a structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. I mean, I don't really see anything different with this one. I mean, there's probably houses down there that have the exact same thing, so I don't know the area, but it looks like it's going to fit nicely. I'd have to agree with that in the fact that, uh, again, it's uh, they're really not changing uh, the, the the size of this at all. They're just they're just lifting it up, so putting it as a second floor instead of as a as a porch. So. Right, and they're and again they're not. They're really just matching what is currently present within the neighborhood and with, with the neighbors next door. Um, I don't see uh, any reason not to support this point. They'll be sitting on the second floor rather than the first floor. That's pretty much it. No problem. No, I can agree with the board again. Uh, the weeks, the weeks are currently, or whoever it is now. Are there windows or anything there that that by the deck being there would interfere with their? No. They have a deck that probably is a few feet away, but they have a first floor deck. It's just a first, but it's no. There's not going to be any I don't even see that, like, privacy or anything. On that side. There's not even right. but based on that, I, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. So all in favor? Number four being met. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, and you have not started doing any work with anything yet, so that's easy. <coughs> so if I have a motion, uh, we'll go from there. Move, Move to approve. approve. Is, uh, is submitted. Stark. Stark one. Stark. <laughs> <laughs> I heard them both talking. And <laughs> seconded. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none all there. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I'll win the race sometime. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just saying.
Yard size. Room number 2590 is the limited reduction of yard size for John and Catherine Matthews. 351 Black Point Road. This is map R90, parcel 2. <coughs> Representatives, uh, let's see you again. State your name and company, and we'll go from there. Andrew. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Matthews. I'm here also with Jeff McKenzie from Rosbera Brothers Construction, who are working on the applicant's home currently. Uh, we wanted to talk to you folks tonight about a request for a limited yard reduction. We have a site that is located in the RF district. The applicant's property was built in 1950, so it well predates uh, the date of 1991. The parcel in the RF district has a 50-foot front yard setback. In surveying out the property, the existing home is roughly about a foot into that 50-foot setback right now. The applicants currently have a uh, porch with a covered uh, platform and some steps, which are shown in this picture right here on the photo. That's included in your package. But as you can see, those steps do project out into that 50-foot uh, setback. So we're here tonight to talk to you about a limited yard reduction in order to reduce that down to a 40-foot front yard setback. That will allow the construction of a farmer's porch across the front of the home. As you see on the uh, uh, views below, this is the existing on the left-hand side of this rendering. That uh, elevation is included in your packet. So we have the existing home. Right now, as I mentioned, uh, Rosbera Brothers Construction is actually building the breezeway and the garage on the property. So if you go by there, you'll see that there's some construction going on right now. If you look up at the colored rendering off in the corner here, you'll see that this darker brown area represents the existing home. The lighter tan area represents the addition that's currently ongoing right now. That's the garage and breezeway and actually a sunroom off the back of the house. None of those improvements require any reductions in the yard setbacks. What we're here tonight to specifically talk to you about is the proposed expansion of that construction project to allow the construction of a farmer's porch across the front of their home. And as Brian has put up on the screen there, that's the proposed elevation view that's shown here down in the corner. But basically, the program is to eliminate this covered porch and construct across the front of the home a farmer's porch to make it more in keeping with the current uh, architectural styles very prevalent in the community. So as I mentioned, the house does right now sit in that front yard setback, and the covered porch and the steps that are there now are well within that as well. What we'd basically like to do is replace that uh, with the uh, farmer's porch across the front of the home. Uh, it does necessitate, though, a reduction in the yard setback down to 40 feet. Just a clarification. You said the steps were in. You didn't mean the steps. Did you specifically even the, the deck itself? The platform yeah. it and the steps are both located within the... But the steps are okay, isn't that correct? I'm looking at this. We have, to, we have to take into consideration the steps coming off from this being <coughs> set back. The steps are that. still in the, within the 10-foot setback, right? Yeah, and by, I think they are by default, but I was just wondering if it matters. It's not really a conversation. So. 
the steps as shown are going to be within the proposed 30, uh, 40 foot setback. That is correct. It's, it's irrelevant. Okay. If they were attached to the deck and they, uh, the porch, and they exceeded that, then that's true. They, they wouldn't be able to be eligible for that. If they were the way we usually do it, if it's structural and attached, it has to meet setback. If it's um, landscaping material, such as stone, dry stacked, it wouldn't. The string. I'm not going to dignify that with a response. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, any letters or comments on this? We did. Any uh, other comments? Uh, why don't we jump right into the uh, question? Okay. So we. Uh, Okay, so we know, as you pointed out, it was built prior to 1991. That's correct. Um, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. As we mentioned in our letter, the applicants are proposing the addition of a farmer's porch across the front of their home. This type of a design feature is very common in the community and offers an opportunity to allow the homeowners to spend time outside while being sheltered from the elements. In addition, it creates an architecturally welcoming view from the street. Surrounding properties include a mix of uses, which would include single-family homes, condominiums, farms, and community buildings, such as the Black Point Fire Station and Camp Ketchup. There are three homes in the immediate vicinity of the applicant's property on Black Point Road, all of which have farmer's porches or enclosed porches along their front walls. And they have to do the physical features of the lot and the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion and enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. As we noted, the existing home and covered landing is located within the 50-foot front yard setback, so any addition to the front of the home would require a similar limited yard reduction. In order to achieve the architectural intent of the farmer's porch as a welcoming enhancement to the streetscape, it must be constructed on the building front. The applicants currently have a garage and breezeway under construction on the southerly side of the home. The proposed farmer's porch will provide architectural continuity to this new addition. Based on the town's GIS database, the northerly side of the site is approximately 16 feet lower than the abutting Black Point Fire Station. Thus, to expand the home in the northerly direction would be affected by the existing slope of the property. And the impacts, effects of enlargement and expansion of the new property on the existing use of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building <coughs> structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. It's not anticipated that the proposed construction of a new farmer's porch along the front of the home will create any impacts that would be substantially different than if the farmer's porch were constructed outside of the 50-foot front yard setback. Abutting properties immediately adjacent to the applicant's lot include the Sandpiper Cove condominiums and associated open space areas located to the south and west of the site. The Black Point Fire Station is located to the north of the site. Properties across Black Point Road <coughs> include single-family residences which have farmer's porches and farm areas. Although the site is located in the RF district, it's important to note the R2 residential district is located nearby on the same side of Black Point Road, just to the north of the intersection of Black Point Road and Sperwink Road, just north of the fire station. The R2 zone only requires a 40-foot front yard. Thus, there are homes in the overall vicinity that would be equally as close to Black Point Road as the applicant's home would be with the requested limited yard reduction. Thank you. Um, no letters on this open public. Anybody wish to speak to this on the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public part of the hearing and come back to the board for questions, comments, or motion. Just as a point of clarification, um, the porch itself, it looks like, is only going to encroach an additional six feet. It's just the steps that go out to the full, to the, to the full 10 feet to the 40 foot line. That's correct. Okay, thank you. This seems to be pretty straightforward, not even uh, requiring walking through each one of the yeah. requirements unless the board feels otherwise. Um, I don't think so. I, I appreciate the thoroughness of the answers provided here. <coughs> Makes it much easier for us. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, maybe you could just 
sort of summarize the, sure. the findings. Okay, so uh, if the board's comfortable with this, and feel free to add it as I go along. Uh, based on the information provided uh, from the applicant and the uh, requirements of the zone and the fact that the home is already, the, the, the uh, porch that's there already is infringing on the setback, and really we're just extending that length coming across, and it's really because are those steps wooden or are they going to be uh, granted or? The proposed ones are. Okay, so be connected. Okay, uh, so we'll consider that part of that. So that within the ten foot rule, and uh, it really has no major impacts on the neighborhood except it's going to look very nice. Um, and the uh, applicants provided very thorough documentation. Their information provided by the package is complete, which is always helpful. It's good to have good people working for you. Um, and uh, so based on those items, uh, I'll move that we approve as requested. Anybody want to add anything? To well, I think one of the other findings of fact that the applicant had mentioned is there were three or four residences that all have the farmer's porches right around the same area that mm -hmm. look very similar to the one that's being promote, proposed. Include that in there too. And also finding a fact that with um, with the addition of the farmer's porch, including the steps that will also protrude from the porch, it's still going to be within um, the requested setback. And do I have a second on the motion? Second. So discussion on the motion? All in favor? A chance. Thank you very much. <laughs> it really does speak volumes when you bring uh, talented people into to work with you. It makes it a lot easier. So, thank you both. will be next month. Which was shipwrecked. Okay. And that's going back next month. That's what they requested in November. <coughs> pieces left here. One is uh, appeal number 2591. It's a practical difficulty variance request by Abigail Kane, 1 Hillside Avenue. So this is map U27, parcel 74. They requested a table to the next meeting. Um, presumably they didn't state for sure, uh, but I, I expect that they will have the missing information by next week. Okay, so we'll schedule them for first on the agenda for the next meeting. And, uh, Actually, wouldn't shipwreck be first? Yes, I'm um, yeah, sorry, that's true. would be first yep. and they would be second. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then there's one other item uh, that was brought before us, and I'll just read it into the record, uh, dear Mr. Uh, Chairman Maroon. We requested a, a one-time six-month extension of the May 12, 2016 Skyward Zoning, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals approval of our request for a limited reduction of yard size variance that appeal number 2571 is due to expire within six months of the date of approval. We have been in contact with several builders, one of which has expressed that Scarborough is undergoing an unprecedented level of building activity and building suppliers have been slow in returning estimates to our potential builders. This has in turn slowed our progress in be uh, to begin our project. Having just met uh, with our contractor, we have been informed that the excavation phase on this project is expected to begin in uh, late October or early November. However, we wish to extend the start window in the event there are any unforeseen circumstances due to weather or labor ability. Thank you for consideration. And we remember that we made a request for a change to be able to do this. And this came in just before that was okay. But you have a choice to either have this come to the meeting next month uh, and be heard as an item or approving it as a board if we so choose now and getting it out of the way, which would be my preference. Sure. I see um, no reason not to. <coughs> Do you have any questions with that? Oh, well, I, I mean, as a new member, I'm just curious what our obligation is to if there is a new abutter. Um, 
if uh, there happens to be a new abutter. So, you know. Typically, what happens with the new? That's a, a fair question. Typically, and then I'm okay. No, no, I think you can go ahead. I have two questions, and then I mean, I guess, is this typical? Because I mean, no. we don't want people to prematurely. It seems like they prematurely came to the board, where these other people are coming fully prepared, plans built, you know, with a builder, ready to go. Um, so I mean, I think just this, again, as someone new, I'm trying to gauge. We get a lot of uh, of people planning on starting, and they'll come forward, and what they have to do is they have to make a new application. And what we found is that really we went back to the old application, repeated the same things, raised our hands, and just automatically but extended they paid it. They fees and stuff again, right? Right. And so this way here, what it does is it allows for the extension of what we would normally allow anyway, but eliminates the hassle, the process, the waste of time, and we've never had an issue that's been a very straight. So that was a, this is the first time it'll be used. The only caveat is that this was requested prior to the the okay of that uh, by the town. A technicality, uh, in some points, some people's minds, in my opinion, I don't. Pri prior to the what? Prior to the town saying, you can, we can do what we requested with this new system. I mean, we, we went to the town and requested the ability to do this extension. Uh, uh, the build, the building chairman. permit hasn't been issued, right? No, That's what we're here for. Let me, no, go ahead. Let me, let me clarify. <laughs> the, they received a variance in May, okay? The variance, the, the way the rules are, says that you need to get it started within six months. They're rolling up on their six-month period. They're finding out from their contractors that they can't, they, they may be very close to not getting a start within that six-month window. The ordinance under Section 4K, provisions on expiration of permits, says all permits and approvals issued pursuant to this ordinance shall expire if construction of the building or structure or commencement of the use has not begun within six months of the date on which the permit or approval was issued. Upon good cause shown, the person or board issuing the original permit or approval may extend its effectiveness for an additional six months. That's what you're, just that's what they're asking oh, yes. for. Right. Has, has the building permit been issued? The building permit has not been issued yet. Okay. Thank you. It's good to know. It's a good question. Yep. And this is the first time we've done it. So. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no. We've we've done we've done several extensions. I know mean, we've done extensions, but we've not, we've always had them come back. Uh, I can't think of one otherwise. Can you two? I can't think of one that didn't come to, to come before us to get it extended. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes when they come for the for the <laughs> extension, we'll put them on the agenda. Yeah. But it's always just been a letter. Yeah. It's always been yeah. It's always been rubber stamped. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so that but. That's the difference to me is that they're not coming before us in the past. They've always come before yeah. us again. Yeah. And so that's that's the dif that's why I did, wanted to define it for you because that's what I've always seen. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so it may, maybe it was done differently before yeah, before I got here. I, don't I know. think it was. Uh, the, we always used to have yep. to come back and they go through the whole routine. And sure. Should we be dealing with something like this with that not being on the agenda? Uh, it's actually up to us. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm requesting that we put it on the agenda and allow it to go through unless the board has a problem. Sure. And so if the board has no problem with it, uh, then I'll move that we put it on the agenda and uh, and vote accordingly. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, approval allowing this to add, be added to the agenda and approve the extension for six months. I'll second that. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor? Next unanimous. It's going to save a lot of time for a lot of people. It's a good thing. It makes life easier. Thank you. <coughs> that is our meeting. Is there any that to me? Uh, if, you, if you'd like, sir, if you want to take a microphone. Uh, Um, I'm sorry, I can't push on the mic, but I can't hear it on the mic. But what I'd rather do is just, um, we're really not going to be open for that question tonight uh, for a variety of reasons. So what I'd like to do is, uh, there's no public hearing part of this, um, but we can talk if you have a question later, but it's not a public meeting part. <coughs> uh, so I'll open up the zoning board comments or questions or statements. 
good. Seeing none, we have a motion. Move to adjourn. All in favor? Motion. That's unanimous, and we adjourn. Thank you.